All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Donald from Jamaica Funeral Directors Forum. So over the past few days, a few directors reached out to me. They wanted to know like, what are the new protocols governing how to take care of deceased loved ones. So I went ahead and reached out to one of my dear friend, Luan Jones from Covenant Funeral Home in Ontario, Canada. So I'm just going to go through a quick little introduction so we can see what is going on in today's world. So this was actually in New York where the situation has gotten a bit out of hand where they are setting up makeshift morgues and refrigerated units. So today Luan is going to share with us what it's like with the pandemic and what can we do as funeral service professionals to protect ourselves as well as serve with dignity and respect? So it's all over to you now, Luan. Good afternoon, everyone. And Donald, thank you for having me. Um, as always, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be in a position to be able to educate and to serve um, my fellow community. So as we all know, we've been faced with a situation whereby it is unprecedented and we've never been put in this position before. For me to be speaking um, to you via internet or speaking to families via internet has, has been unheard of. Not only is it impersonal, um, but it's just something that we've, we have never done, honestly, in regards to funeral service. So the COVID-19 has, I would say, increased our awareness um, in terms of, you know, what we need to, to get done and, and continue doing to be able to, assert, to, be able to serve our families, um, both here locally um, and internationally as well. So when I speak of locally, I speak of here in Toronto or in Ontario where my funeral home is located. Um, but at the same time, sharing what we're doing over here with our friends over there in Jamaica in this case. Um, as you can see, I'm donning my mask. Um, this is a mask that I use that um, when I'm just doing general work in the funeral home and and somebody is coming in. Um, when people are coming into the funeral home, they must be wearing their gloves and they must right. have a mask or they won't be allowed to come into the funeral home, unfortunately, or any conversation will be done behind the screen door um, if they don't have that. Um, you know, constant disinfection. Um, we're disinfecting everywhere. If we're touching something, we have our disinfection. And I'll show you a number of the things that that we have available. And also if you don't have those things available, we have to be able to improvise to the best possible right, way that right. we can. Um, you know, there are certain things that have to be brand name, but not everything has to be brand name. Um, we use and, and make do with the, with the resources that we have on hand. So that would be paramount as well in terms of educating um, people, um, educating the industry in in terms of what needs to be done um, so again frontliners um, we are now the frontliners um, they yes, deemed us are, as, yeah we, we heard that um, today that we are now the frontliners of, of the coronavirus um, you know people were commending the first responders the, the the essential workers the nurses and we do commend them as well um, but at the end of it, when it's all said, of, said and done, in terms of end of life or death, in this case, we're the ones that are going to be dealing with those bodily fluids. We are the ones that are going to be dealing, you know, with, with, with whatever is coming out of the mouth. So right, anything right. that is leaking, any leakage in this case, those pathogens are now becoming airborne. Um, and as we're living, we're handling those people that are basically lifeless, we're inhaling those pathogens and we're also now subject to those pathogens and also possibly, um, you know, able to, to contract whatever has been going, around, going on or, 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 or traveling within the air. 
So it's imperative that we take the necessary precautions. Um, we understand in terms of funeral service, funeral service is a business, yes. Funeral service is our bread and butter, yes. But at the same time, is it gonna be worth putting your life on the line exactly. for a few dollars? So for me personally, no amount of money can, can buy or save my life or my health. Um, I'd rather be rather know that I'm healthy and able to function using my own faculties, using my knowledge to look after whoever I need to look after. Right. So that is that is paramount. We have to to use wisdom in everything that we do. If we're not sure about something, always ask. There's there's no problem in asking. Um, Questions are not, well, I'm not going to ask because it's a dumb question. At this point in time of our lives, no question is a dumb question. If you don't know the answer to something, ask. We have um, the forum available. We have different groups available. Um, we have mentors. We have colleagues that we can call. We can text and say, you know what? This is the situation. What do I do? You know, how do I, how do, I do it? And if you don't know how to do it, find somebody again that knows how to do it that would be able to help you. And this is a time that we must unify and come together. It's not about who has the most cases, um, who has the best vehicles or facilities. In this case, it's not about that. Um, I use it as an example of, of doing a Catholic funeral service. It doesn't matter how expensive that casket is, once that casket goes into the church, it's being covered with a pall. Yeah. So the, the blanket or the sheet um, is covering. So it doesn't matter how much money you had. It doesn't matter how much you know, money you had in the bank, how many houses, how many cars. In the eyes of God, we're all equal. Yes. Right? So, yeah. So at this time, we're all equal. Everything is neutralized. Fair playing ground. Um, again, it doesn't matter how big your facility is we're just limited to the number of people um, that are able to participate in the service and i'll touch on that as well um but the but the, the common goal is to bury their loved ones in a dignified respectful and timely manner so i have a quick question how long does this covid 19 disease last for after the person has reached the end of life cycle So, hold so on. the directives and what, what we have heard, um, apparently the, the virus itself lives for 72 hours after death. Um, there may be studies that show that the virus may live a little bit longer, or I've heard on metal surfaces it would, it would live longer as well. Um, so in the case where um, a person has been deceased, for, for three days or more, don't take it lightly and say, well, you know what, the virus is now gone. I can continue with whatever I was doing normally. We, it doesn't matter whether or not that person actually died from Corona, um, treat everybody the same way. Right. And, 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 and have everybody um, be aware that you're treating it as the same way. You're still taking your precautions. You're still wearing your, your personal protection equipment. Um, you know, you're, you're still doing what you need to do in terms of universally to protect yourself and to protect your loved ones as well. Right, because at this moment, it's very important for persons working in the morgue as well to have their change of clothes, their appropriate gowns and, you know, the respiratory mask and head covering just to protect themselves because the worst case scenario is to be working in such a critical facility and taking on the bacteria to your loved ones who you love so dearly. Right. And, and again, certain times, like, you, you just do it. It's, it's just in our nature to just do things. For me, people are asking, well, are, how, are you, how are you coping? Well, the only way that my life has changed, in a sense, is that I'm disinfecting more. Right. We would, we would clean the funeral home on a regular, frequent basis, but to be disinfecting and wiping everything down after each person leaves, 
we never did that though there's some that's something that we we would have taken for granted but in being more mindful of you know cross contamination we have to we we have to think ahead and think okay well that person's here i wonder if they have it or i wonder if they even know that they have it they might not know that they have it right but it would still be an opportunity for the disease, the, the virus, to be spread onto us. Right. You know, nobody right. In, in this case, nobody is is immune. Especially where there's no vaccination, we have to be very, very careful. So any other pointers you would like to give as in the embalming process? Is there any other chemicals that would have to be introduced or more disinfection to the corpse itself? So more disinfection definitely have to be um, be, be taken. Um, again, there's different chemicals. I can promote different products. I can promote different companies, but continue to use whatever chemicals you've been using right now. Um, me personally, I've always in in harder cases, I would lean on Javex or bleach. Um, oh. I have generic things like I have a few things that I have here. Um, so what I've done for my personal disinfection in terms of anything that I'm touching, I went to the local store. We have dollar stores in England. They have the pound shop. So this was just a, a spray bottle that I bought. And what I did was I'm using pine salt with a mixture of dental and a mixture of vinegar Yes. And, and filling up the bottle and spraying it wherever it needs to be sprayed. Okay, so those are simple things. Um, literally, this cost me a dollar. Um, the bleach, a dollar. The pine saw, I think, was a dollar fifty over here. Um, so I don't know what those values are over there in Jamaica, but any type of disinfectant that you've been using to do cleaning, um, the first day that I did it, I remember going. I, I remember spraying it and it just brought back childhood memories of me going into my grandmother's house and smelling the Dettol. Yes, yes. Right? Because she was, she, she was cleaning. That was just her house. You smell the Dettol, you, you smell the mothballs. So yes. those are the things that, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, this, is, this brought back it's that memory. Right? And um, also, okay. just to add an next mm -hmm. point to it, disinfection also includes cleaning the hearse, and also anything that we use, any apparatus, right. the stretchers, the church trucks, anything that we use, because this bad yeah. boy can transfer from surface to surface. Yeah, yeah. So we do door handles, we do the car handles, we do the steering wheel, we do the seat, we do the headrest. Um, again, the back of the vehicle, the sides, anywhere somebody would be touching, even the mirrors, like you don't know who's going <sighs> to go past in the parking lot and touch your vehicle, right? right? right. So anything, and, and not only for the professional vehicles, use this in your personal life as well, because you don't know, again, whose, whose fingerprint is wherever you've been touching or where right. you're about to touch. Because I did a workshop in 2017, and they also taught us that your shoe is very important. When you're working in the prep room, that can transfer a lot of bacteria back home. So it's recommended mm -hmm. that you use a shoe for work purposes. And when you're leaving, yep. you change it to yep. prevent any transmission of these pathogens right. to the, the world. And again, if you're not able to do that, if you're going home, leave your shoes outside. You know, we right, were brought right. up that when you're going to somebody's house, you take your shoes off at the door, right? So you, you're, not take, you're not going home with your shoes and walking into your house. That's just like wearing your clothes. You're not going to wa walk into your home and crawl into your bed with your clothes on. You take off your clothes, you bathe, whatever, you, change, you have your change of clothes, right? We used to have yes. our street clothes, and you go into the house, you have your house clothes, right? right. So again... It's about using common sense and, and using the values that we were taught. Yes, and I have one other question in regards to shipping and receiving of remains. These cases, they are banned from shipping to another country or is it possible from your 
knowledge so far on this crisis? We have currently, we have um, cases whereby we were supposed to send the bodies to Jamaica. We were supposed to send the bodies to um, St. Vincent. But unfortunately, because of the borders being closed, yes. um, we can't get those bodies out as yet. Um, in terms of delaying it, here in, in Canada, we've been given the directive that we're no longer to store bodies. Oh. So people that have normally had the wish to be buried outside or overseas, unfortunately, they will have to be buried here. Um, there are a couple of things that I suggest to families uh, in terms of burials, and it depends upon how badly they want to have their loved one in Jamaica. You can bury here. After this is all said and done, you can disinter and have their loved ones shipped back home to Jamaica or wherever they want. Or cremation could be another factor as cremation, well. Cremation is an option as well. Um, cremation is a little bit more final in a sense that people won't be able to see their loved ones. Right, right. I know viewing at this moment. Or right, right. Is it the case that you could set up like a virtual online viewing as well to preserve the memories of that yeah. Thanksgiving yeah. service? Yeah, that's what we've been doing actually. Um, we've been inundated with a number of companies that are offering video services and charging for these services. We're making use of our social media. We're making use of Facebook, which is easy for families to access. Right. So what I've been doing is I've been setting up um, on our company page, we have watch parties. Um, so the watch party would be exclusive to those that would be invited into that group. And they would have full access of seeing the funerals in a real time, right. real time that is place. That is a wonderful right. idea. Yeah. So not only are we live streaming, a lot of the live streams that other funeral homes are doing, the camera is set up in the far corner ceiling and you're seeing the backs of everybody, right? You're okay. not, you're not, you're not seeing the, the full visuals. So we're actually using our phones and we're actually being your eyes. Um, we're walking up to the casket. We're taking a few moments there so that you can actually see your loved one in the casket. Right. Um, you, you can see, you know, what their hands look like, what their feature, their features look like. It's like you're there, but you're not there. And we're right. doing the so, same for burials as well. So we would be there spiritually, not physically. But exactly. Right. Exactly. And we found that a lot of our families, they so appreciate it because, again, they would have loved to be there, but they can't. Um, but again, with, with Facebook, um, it gives them the opportunity to participate. Right. Mm -hmm. And also... From your perspective, I would just want you to tell the world why it is important to stay home at this moment because you are the one who gave the last care of them, take care of them, and you see all types of cases and age range right now in this pandemic. But some persons taking it for a joke, they're here to stay at home, and then as soon as the authorities are off the road, they come on playing cat and mouse games. As I've seen on the television where some communities, persons are still hosting parties and they're not taking it serious because the, the total tally right now in Jamaica is like 233 cases. So they're not taking it as serious as they should. But where I am in Massachusetts, we are over 30,000 cases right now with a, quite a number of deaths behind it. So I know it is very important for me to stay home unless it's necessary if i have to go out i make sure i wear a mask and i have on the necessary attire to go with it and a pair of gloves to not transfer any bacteria right and staying home i know we don't like to stay home we have to be out on the road we have to be doing this and you know what there's a lot of hype but at the end of the day even even when your funeral comes, there won't be anybody there to be to right, be celebrating right. your life. Like how we normally do funerals, how I have witnessed funerals in Jamaica take place, like a like a stage show. Right, we right. Are now, we are now limited to ten people. 
Okay, right? uh, so and have a quick surprise from for you from the, the last meeting that we had. Let me see if it's right here. Oh, this was the certificate that I received at the infection control training, but I'm going to go ahead and show you that photograph. Just take a second. <laughs> okay, did you remember this day, this funeral? This was the something. Yes, this was something yes. to talk about. We had a large crowd, and that, that funeral. Was... Oh my gosh, that funeral! I have never seen anything like it in my life. Never experienced anything like it in my life. Miss Audrey, we love you. Yes, we definitely um, do love her. But on a sad note, it just brings back a lot of sad memories, remembering that Bridget was there and now she's yes, deceased. Yes. And, you know, it just yeah. shows why we should really appreciate life and tell each other yeah. that we love them and, you know, show love to the other group members and just promote right. unity and living. Unity. Good. It's it's about unity. And, and I use Spanky, like Bridget, I met Bridget last April. And Facebook yes. actually reminded me we conducted a funeral together and the relationship, I'm from Toronto, I'm from Canada. I'm a, a director coming into your world as, a, as another director. Technically, we, we're, we should be like this, but we were like this. Right, right. It was, it, it was unified. It was so nice. We were able to serve the family together. Um, yeah. It breaks my heart to know that her life was taken the way that it was. Um, but again, let this be a reminder that death respects nobody. No one, yes. You know, um, in her case, it was it was it was done by man or a man, and I say I don't mean gender specific. It was done it was done by a person. Right. Um, right. Imagine Corona coming in. Corona doesn't care if you're black, you're white, you're rich, you're poor, you're young, you're old once it's there that's it right so in terms of the the unity again we have to stress and we have to to, to set grounds and set rules and set boundaries too um, and let people know that it is so important to, to stay at home and observe and most of all respect leadership exactly. you know um, there are people that get unruly. There are people that, you know, they don't take direction from, from other people. You know, nobody can talk to me or can tell me what to do. Okay, so when you're faced with that virus or your, your mother or your child or your father is faced with the coronavirus, who are you going to take direction from? Because you didn't want to hear. You didn't want to listen. There's an old saying, if you can't hear, you're going to feel. Right. Right? We don't want anybody to be feeling um, the effects. Like I lost my sister on Monday in oh my, England. My yeah, deep she, condolences she, to you. Thank you. She passed away from the, from the coronavirus as well. Oh my. Um, she was battling with cancer, um, was in remission. It came back, but her immune system was weak, to, weak and she couldn't fight the virus. And literally, right. that's what she succumbed to. So again, it doesn't matter like who you are. Um, but again, we need to obey the, the rules and the laws of the land and obey it and stay home. Right. You know, right. As, as, as you Jamaicans say, Tana ya yad. <laughs> yes, Tana ya yad. Right? Um, our prime minister, I can't remember what he said exactly but he didn't use the the actual term but basically it was like stay the bleak home oh. um yeah so again if you if you have to stay home if you don't have to go anywhere take time to do things that you wouldn't have normally done take time to declutter your house take time to to clean reorganize redecorate you know move the bed to the other side of the room you know, do things like that just to occupy your time yes. and to, to, to limit that, that boredom and, and that, you know, the, the, the unrest 
Yes, for me, I've and been doing a lot of crossword puzzles since of lately to just relax yeah. my mind and, you know, keep up to date with words. Yeah, yeah. So people are catching up on their sleep. People are, are learning new skills in the kitchen, you know. Sometimes yes. it's trial by error. Everybody's posting up their, their pictures of new foods, myself included. Yes, I I've just been was it. about to say that I saw that you are trying different yeah in the kitchen nowadays yeah yeah i'm cooking like i i never i i love to cook but i have very very little time in my house so honestly the little bit of time that i get to stand to stay in my house i'm loving it um right. food you know my weekends my only rest day is really a sunday and i'm on that scale sunday night early monday morning and because i've eaten proper food i've gained weight right so my friends were saying oh the the hungry worm you got hungry worms i said yeah the hungry worms are there because they know that during the week they're not getting fed so they take advantage <laughs> of it on the sunday right right so yeah so again i i can't stress the importance of staying home um if you can't stay home go and get what you need to get from point A to point B and back home to point A again. Um, you know, you want to talk to your friends. You, you want to hang out. Do, again, we're, we're doing Zoom, right? right? So if you want to see your friends, we've got social media, we've got data, um, we've got telephones, we've got WhatsApp, you know, pick up the phone and call rather than exactly. come to the house and, and hang out or go to the street and hang out. Right. So before we are about to wrap up, we, I would like you to tell everyone about your journey at Covenant Funeral Home, the first Black-owned funeral home in entire Canada, and just send out a few shout-outs to some of your friends and your new farm family in Jamaica. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I, again, being a part of the forum has been an honor. You guys accepted me as part of the family. And Donald, I right. thank you as well. You're and most welcome. Those of you who, who know me or haven't haven't had any contact with me, you know that you can reach out to me any day, any night. I had conversations and you know, mentoring people over there in Jamaica as well. So Covenant Funeral Homes, we're in our fourth year. Um, yes, we are Canada's first black owned and operated funeral home um it's been a privilege to know that i'm able to serve the community rather than work for somebody um and be what i call that token person you know that that person that you see on the front but has no direction or no authority in the back um so as a funeral home owner um we have set the trend or a, a trail for other funeral homes to come as well so I, I actually um, am encouraged that there will be more funeral homes um, owned and operated by Black funeral directors. Right. And um, I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, in terms of shout outs to Jamaica, um, Donald, you're no longer in Jamaica, um, but definitely bigging you up. Um, first, I'd like to shout out to um, Mr. Perry, Peter Perry from Perry's Funeral Home. Um, that's where my journey started in Jamaica as yeah. well. Secondarily, um, Mr. Hunnigan. Um, yes, Melvin Hunnigan. Know, yeah, Melvin Hunnigan, sweetheart of a man as well. Um, Miss Audrey. Um, yes, mommy Audrey. Yep. Yeah, um, who else? Wendy. Yes, can't forget Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wendy. Um, Tony Burke. Yes. Um, I know he's in Jamaica. Well, he's in, I think he's, he's in, in Florida, Florida now. now. I spoke to him. He came up from the earlier part before the border yeah. were closed. Um, Michael Webster, another one of the guys from, yes. from Tony Hunnigan Gans. as well. Um, Jason Young. Yes. Uh, Washa. Washa. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else? Uh, Prentice. Um, Jayon. Yeah. Um, who else? There's so many. There's um, yes, a lot of people. Action, so we have to action just, sound. 
yeah, there's so many, there's so many people and, you know, my, my brethren and sistren, and, and I love you guys. And uh, I thank you again for the opportunity and, you know, the experience to, to be here and to educate and to share with you today. Before we go, um, again, I just have some things. Again, like I have different gloves for different things. Right. These are basic, basic preparation gloves that I use. Like if it's just a like an immediate disposition where we're not doing any physical embalming, just a bathing, sometimes right. I would just use these these gloves. Um, again, this is our pine saw that we we use. Um, these are the masks that we use. These are the ones that I use for my preparation, and these are the the ones actually that the hospitals are in need of. These are the N95. These right. ones that I, I don't wear these on a regular basis because these actually stifle you. Right, um, they're very they're, hard to they're, breathe through. They're very, very effective. Um, but I use, I reserve these ones for, for our preparations. Right. Um, and my question is, do you think the respirator is effective against the COVID-19, the one with the filters outside? I think the, the, the respirators are effective. My glove ripped. Um, the, resp the, the respirators, they are effective. Um, see how these are just, they right. fall apart. Um, but again, are they, is there a need to be wearing a respirator that way? I don't even wear that. So again, it depends upon your level of comfortability and what you would think of being, I guess, safe to you. Um, if you need to wear a respirator and think that you're going to be feeling more safe, then go ahead and wear that respirator. But for me, that's like a gas mask. So right, right. it's very, it's very, very heavy. And I have to be able to manipulate my head and, and be able to see what I'm doing, yeah. right? Um, so again, to each their own. These are wipes that we use as well. These are hospital wipes. These came out um, with the, when the AIDS pandemic came out. Um, oh. So we have these too. They're used in hospitals as well. So these are very, very good. Um, we've got Clorox, Clorox wipes as well. Again, bleach. It doesn't have to be brand name bleach. Any bleach um, would do. And the sanitizer, this is our hand sanitizer. Right. Um, and I know that a lot of people have been making their own sanitizer. Again, if you have the ability to make your own sanitizer, make your sanitizer and have it available. And then we have like a Lysol. So this is like a brand name Lysol disinfectant. Um, okay. This is a generic name, similar to Lysol. But again, yes. it's the same effect, but it's just a generic brand. And it does exactly what Lysol is supposed to do. When we're in the prep room, we're wearing our goggles. Yeah. Right? So you have your goggles. Um, and again, these are the gloves that I use really to, to handle anything around the funeral home. If I'm meeting a family, I'm shaking their hands with these gloves. Okay. These ones, they're very, very inexpensive. And they just go like every other pair of gloves that I wear, they go in the bin, they go in the garbage. Um, these gloves too, the same light embalming preparation work, um, but yeah. these are longer cuffs than the normal ones. So we have those. These are the gloves um, that I use for my embalming preparations, my post cases, my, my autopsy cases, the postmortems. So I made double glove. I'm using this glove and I'm using this glove. Yes, for more protection against right. any breakage right. and stuff like that. Right. For our COVID cases, um, again, you're double gloving, you're triple gloving, and these are like the heavy duty gloves. Okay, so there's a glove, there's literally a glove for everything. Um, face shields, um, we just got these in yesterday. So these are our face shields. Yes, prevention from any splash or leakage, any accidental, you know? Correct. Correct. And it's protecting, again, it's protecting your eyes. Um, I don't know if anybody's experienced any splashes or anything going in your eyes. I have um, years ago, and it's, it's not a nice feeling. 
you know. Again, these are the N95 masks. And in terms of day-to-day -day stuff, these are the masks that we use. Yes. Um, in terms of dealing with, you know, the public or if we're going out, these are the ones. These, these are really essentially the only masks that you'll, you'll need. Um, we have another one that I just got. I just got that today. It's a, a cloth mask that I have. Um, and the infamous. Detail. Right. I've always had this. And again, people ask, I haven't done anything different. I always had these things on hand. Um, so I have my stock already. I don't have to rush to go up and buy these things because I already had them. Toilet right, paper. That's very good. I've had toilet paper. I've had my full stock of toilet paper because those are things that are important to me. So I didn't have to go join the masses and, and bulk buy toilet paper or panic buy as well. And then our gowns. Um, you know, our coveralls with the hood. I'm not going to open it up because we may right. need it. We're going out. But again, these are what we use to protect ourselves when we're outside and we wear rubber boots too and as is well. It, is it recommended that the deceased be placed in a union hall as well due, due to the nature of such infectious disease? Well, if you have, um, if you have the opportunity to place that person in a union hall, do so. If you don't, then my recommendation is bagging or pouching. <laughs> Excuse me, if they're going, when you're doing your removals, um, bring your pouch. Sometimes it was just, we use just sheets, um, right, but now right. we're equipped to have body bags and those pouches. If it's a, a, a more severe case, we're double pouching and we are triple pouching. Again, we're ensuring the, the safety and the, the, sanit the, the, the sanitization um, of the entire area in, in terms of our vehicle and our, and our personal, right. our personal uh, hygiene. To well. me, the, the most critical part is the initial removal. That's when you're exposed to every and anything. So it is important the to be prepared for your yep. removal. Yeah. And if you don't have, if you don't have the, the, the necessary PPE, like the, the Uninol or the, the protective overall covering, then I was thinking, you know what? You can use garbage bags. Right, um, right. We have the garbage bags. We use heavy duty garbage bags. And sometimes when we're, we're preparing people, we would diaper them or put them in a Uninol in a garbage bag, right? Yeah. So just picture yourself as a deceased person and you're taping, you're taping yourself up to secure and prevent anything from slipping in. Right, right. So right. you're using, um, I calculated, you're actually going to use five garbage bags. So the five garbage bags, so one on, your, on each leg, right? Yeah. And then what you would do is to make another hole for the leg, for your legs, you're cutting out the corners. You're stepping into that bag. Right, so now you're protected. You've got the two bags on your legs, and then you have this for your torso. You can have somebody tie it, right? Yeah. And then take and then take another bag and cut out an area for your neck here. Pull that over your head. Put it down over yourself. So only your arms are out, right? If you want to go a step further, again, take another garbage bag, put it on your arms. Right? And again, you're covered. Right. Right? For me, um, with my hair too, I've got locks. So I can't wear a regular hairnet. Right? So it could be that I'm using a plastic bag, putting that on my head, and then just wrapping it with a piece of material. I'm protected. Exactly. Right? So then I'm either taking that wrap off, throwing the bag away, and then just reusing another bag the next time and washing the washing the, the, the wrap. So again, when you don't have the brand name things, you can improvise. Right, and, and we Jamaicans are very good at that. Improvision is what it's we are very, taught very to provide. Skillful. Yeah. Survival is people definitely. Say, people say it's ghetto, it's ghetto, yeah, but it works. Exactly. And I'm, I'm protected. So you always have to think, okay, in the event, 
you know, what will happen in the event. Let's say I don't have those resources. I still need to be able to protect myself and I protect myself by any means. Because even in New York, I saw a story where the nurses were out of PPE and they had to use this same method to protect oh. themselves for the day because they didn't have any more guns to wear. So they had to be creative and yeah. that's what they did. Yeah, yeah. See, I didn't, even, I didn't even hear that. And I'm just thinking, I was driving this morning and said, you know what? We can do this. You don't, you don't need to go buy the brand name stuff too. If you have access to garbage bags, garbage bags are cheap, right? Use the garbage bags. And also, I would like you to give us your contact information if anyone who sees this video either on YouTube or the Jamaica Funeral Directors Forum and Media Service in Canada, they know definitely where to find you and how to get to you and so forth because you're one of the most caring and one-on-one -on -one directors I've ever met and I really appreciate the time when you were doing the repatriation and you were very involved with your family from start to end and I would definitely recommend your service to anyone I know in the Ontario region so you can just pass on your info now so for future use they can know definitely where to contact Covenant Funeral Homes. For sure. Yeah, again, it's Covenant Funeral Homes. We're located in Toronto, Canada, serving the GTA. Um, the address is 2505 Eglinton Avenue East here in Toronto or Scarborough, Ontario. Phone number is 416-265-2652. I am on Facebook, um, Covenant Funeral Homes. We have our business page. Again, my name is Luann Jones. Um, I'm on WhatsApp. You can WhatsApp me. Again, 416-265-2652. That's the business line. You can text me. You can email me at Covenant Funeral Homes, Inc. So C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T. Funeral, F-U-N-E-R-A-L, homes, gmail.com. So that's our, our company email address. Um, I'm on Instagram as well, at Covenant Funeral Homes, and also on Twitter as well, at Covenant F-H. Okay, and for me as well, you know, you can find me at Donald Collins on YouTube, Donald Collins on Facebook, and Jamaica Funeral Directors Forum on Facebook. and. I'm one of the persons who most time is available as well. If you need someone that you can use for mentorship, any problem, you can always, regarding to funeral stuff, you can always reach out to me. And this group has been around since 2016, and it has definitely opened up the door for us, especially in Jamaica, to just know each other and work with each other to get the job done. And it's truly, a great appreciation to be associated with people like you who can also help to groom me and make me into the person I will be tomorrow. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Sir Donald. <laughs> and, and again, everybody, please stay at home if you don't have to go out. Um, Take time, and again, this is a time for reflection too because a lot of things are being renewed here. Um, and once we're back in effect again, a lot of things are gonna change. Um, exactly. it, it's, it's a regeneration, a rejuvenation um, of, our, our, of our current state. Um, so take time to reflect. And now you see who's important to you, who, who needs to be there. We have so many different people in our lives that really aren't useful right. right so you know those people that are needed to be there will forever be there you have people that come in our lives they say for a reason and a season so this is definitely a season well you'll see and you know who is really really true to you right so stay safe and most importantly, stay sanitized. Make sure that you're practicing your proper hand washing, your sanitization, because you don't want to be responsible for carrying whatever to somebody else. 
Right, and we mentioned Bridget earlier, but I never shown a photograph. So for those who don't know, this is Bridget. And we have a couple of other dates. We have the CEO of Doyle's Funeral Home. Let me just, Doyle, yes. just look up so everyone can know what is going on. I've got my picture with Bridget as well. And in Bridget's memory, I'm wearing purple. Right, her favorite color. We'll just get this one real quick. And there's also a worker from Doyle's that passed away as well. I'm um, gathering that. So this is Mr. Doyle. Okay. Not sure if this is clear enough, but yes. all and these the are Doyle's, posted the on Doyle's Facebook. Family, we send our condolences here from Covenant Funeral Home. And then we have our next young man from Kingston that was gone down there as well, Lando. So let me see if I can find a photograph of him. So he he was gone down on the 1st of April. His death was one that no one really believed because for All Fool's Day, everyone is saying that someone died. We all think it was a joke. So may bad. light perpetual shine upon their souls. And this is Pushy from Darley's. He is the worker from Darley's that passed away. So I'm just giving a okay. quick little My glance family. so that My everyone family. can know that they are in our prayers and we all remember them and we stand strong with them during this hard time and we hope that everyone will get over it and their memories will always remain in our hearts. And again, thank you for sparing us your time and your information workshop here was very wonderfully done and we totally appreciate it. Again, I thank you for having me. God bless you. God bless everybody participating and watching. Um, and again, if you feel the need that you need to contact either one of us, in the forum, you have our contact information and right. access. So thank you very much and have yourself a great day. You too. Blessings. Okay. Bye. Blessings.